Welcome everyone, it's the Mike Tech Show, show number 893. Tonight, stories from the trenches, new client projects that I'm working on, then the best free backup software, the Vivaldi browser, which if you're watching me on YouTube, that Mike Tech Show logo back on the TV, I was unable to do that, and because of Tim in the chat, he recommended Vivaldi because you can cast, and I'm going to demonstrate that. And then we got some listener email, which is going to cover a great utility that you're going to want to hear about. So first, I hope everyone had a happy new year, and I sincerely wish everyone a healthy, successful, and prosperous new year. I hope everything goes well for you. And anybody who's made a New Year's resolution, I hope you stick with it. Um, I kind of talk about that in generalities of a, a, of a New Year's resolution. There, there's, I should really write them down and execute them uh, properly, but I don't. Like there's things I want to do with my business. I always have things for the new year some goals, some business goals that I try to achieve. And, you know, they usually go haywire after the first quarter of the year. So, <laughs> all right. So let's get started. Four clients this week I had to give this solution to, which is easy. They're in Microsoft Office. Couple people, two people were in Word, two people were in Excel, and they wanted to know what happened to the file save as. And this happens often, and I've mentioned this in the past. If you have OneDrive active and running, Microsoft Office 365 will by default turn on autosave and it saves it to OneDrive. If you want to save it somewhere else, you got to go up to the upper left-hand corner and check off autosave. There'll be a green light. Turn it off. Now you can do file save as. Four clients this week, including today, I had that for a, a client question. So just interesting that all of a sudden, now, because of the new year, I'm dealing with this. Credit cards expiring, especially when they expire 1223. And clients with Microsoft accounts where they have their credit card, SureWeb, Hosted Exchange, Adobe, and GoDaddy. That's what I've been dealing with since Tuesday with clients that got the warning that their credit card uh, needs to be updated, and I'm helping them make that happen because a lot of them, they don't know how to go into the billing section of this. So I would say a good, you know, five clients with credit cards that they, they were all 1223. So now that's going to get flagged by all these services, and you don't want services to stop. As a matter of fact, when I get a call from a client and they tell me no email is working at all for everybody. The first thing I do is I want to go into like sure web billing and sure enough, their credit card expired. They got warnings that they ignored. And I said, we need an updated credit card and then wait a few minutes and then mail will start flowing that I always check first now. So something I did with updating the credit cards, if applied to my client, I took the opportunity to clean up accounts and licenses. So there might have been extra Microsoft licenses that we never bothered to clean up or there was turnover that they didn't tell me about. And I give them a list and, you know, we clean up, save them, save the client some money. So now something I've been working on the last two days I'm assisting a client that was acquired by another company and they have 
their own tech support. So I'm going to be losing this client. And one of the things I had to do and help them is transferring their Microsoft Business 365 tenant to the new company's tenant that they already have. And this client has nine people and some of them are consultants, but yet they fall under the umbrella for email and everything for this client. And I had to do three things that you got to be careful so they don't lose their connection for office. And we had, you know, multiple Microsoft Teams meetings with uh, me and the, the head of the IT support. And they already started migrating email, SharePoint, and OneDrive. They set up new office licenses. But before we uncouple the domain from the main Microsoft account, I had to make sure every user had a local login because if anybody's using Azure or something like that, you they could lose access to the laptop. As a precaution, I recommended, I created a separate local admin account called admin, admin with a complicated password just in case. We always, we don't want to lose access to the laptop because every user has, they're all laptops. Then I switched their office license to the new email account. And this was interesting. They, the new company, for some of the users, only assigned Microsoft Business Basic. Well, guess what? That doesn't give you the desktop apps. They rely on the desktop apps. So I had to have multiple conversations saying they need Microsoft 365 business standard that gives you not just email, but all of the desktop apps, including full teams, which is what they rely on and how they work. So finally today, got a hold of everybody, logged in, took care of it. So I think tomorrow is going to be the final migration. And then over the weekend, it'll be, I'll generate my final invoice for all the time that I spent this month. And that's a client that's, that's going away. But I do like this. A couple of the people were so happy with our support, my son and I, that they asked me, would I keep the same rate if they call me for personal help on other systems? And I'm like, absolutely. So that's why it always pays to be kind, helpful to everyone, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know a referral that could happen from all these people, especially some of them are consultants and they're not computer consultants. So, all right. So now projects that are currently in progress right now, I am in the middle of of an email migration from SureWeb Hosted Exchange to Microsoft Business 365. There's a lot of timing that's going on, DNS entries that have to be made at critical times. Two walkthroughs coming up on two huge offices. A new dental office from one of our biggest dental clients. They purchased a new building with multiple floors and I got to get my son and our wiring guy that we contract out to walk through and understand where everything's going. So the wiring guy can put his proposal together, financial advisor, new building walkthrough, which, and it's an old, old building. So that's going to be very difficult and challenging for the wiring. I know that. I mean, they literally bought a historical building and I'm like, oh, it's not going to be easy, but we'll, we'll make it happen. And I'm sure there will be many, many, many stories from that. Now, this one, I can't wait until I'm back in Pennsylvania so I can test this out. We're waiting on the go for a new cigar lounge that's literally in our neighborhood. That was a referral to my son in B&I. And as a matter of fact, it was the Comcast guy who's in there in that chapter who gave us the referral because he's doing the Comcast. They're also going to have Verizon. 
So I'm putting a, a router in that can cut over and go to either or. We're putting four access points, a, a gig switch. So we have all the equipment already. We're just waiting on the go for and the, when the construction's done. And I know there'll be more stories about that. So busy, busy, very busy. Tonight, even after the show, I have to create a new account. The person was supposed to start on Monday. So I said, oh, okay, I got the, I can create the email, create the server account, create everything over the weekend. Nope. He's starting tomorrow. I got the call like at four o'clock today. Mike, can you set this all up tonight? I'm like, yeah, I'll take care of it. Not a problem. And what's my, what's my other, I have to look at my, I have to look at my calendar because I have, I have something else I have to create tonight. And, uh, let's see, I totally forget. And that's why I put reminders. I put appointments in as a reminder, like tomorrow, my to-do list is reminders in the morning. So when they pop up, I know, okay, I got to do this. I got to, I have a painful conversation that I'm going to have to have with the software manufacturer where the tech support, the company's so huge, it's, it's Thomson Reuters and it's a fixed asset program and I have to get admin access and waiting on the phone for support is just insane. So that's something else I got to do tonight. I got to try to open up a tick, a support ticket and hope that they call me. But tomorrow, I think I'm just going to dial and leave the phone on speaker until someone answers and just hang in there for a few hours because it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. Now I have a question and this is from my son and it was yesterday. He was on site, one of our biggest clients and here's the problem. They have two Zebra label printers that work perfectly in a shared environment with Windows 10 Pro. But we're in the process of upgrading where they need new hardware. Over the year, we're going to we're slowly rolling out new Dell Optiplexes and with Windows 11 Pro. Anyone who gets Windows 11 Pro cannot print to the shared printer that's being shared from the Windows 10 Pro desktop. They have tried everything. He, there was a, they even read that there was a, a hack, a registry entry that had to be done, did it. Made sure all the permissions are there. Made sure they can see the system, that they can, something is blocked, turned off the firewalls. Turn, there are a few things that they've tried, is there an issue with printing to a local shared printer with Windows 11? And this is the first time we're running into this, and these are critical labels that have to print from other systems. Now, here's what's going to be a go, no go. Next Wednesday, Two systems are scheduled where the Zebra printers are connected. I told my son, just put aside the computer that's working, put the new one in, and work on that first and see if people can print to it when now it's all Windows 11, even the local machine. Because at worst case, if the printer that's the machine that's connected to the printer, as long as that can print, they can always walk up to it. But we got to be able to print to it from Windows 11. Anyway, anybody who put on a print server, that's a Dexter, that's a good, that's a good option. And that's something we haven't done, which is put it on there. I mean, it's funny. My son even went in to enable an SMB. I, I love his diagnostic approach to trying to solve this. And they just had to let it go for now and live to fight another day. And you're right, I'm going to try to put it on a, a print server instead of the local printing. Um, let's see. All right. Now, what I am going to do for the next couple items 
is let's I'm maximizing my synchro and I'm going to talk about everything but I'm also going to demonstrate it by putting my middle display up I am remotely connected to the test desktop in Pennsylvania and I have the resolution where it's bigger fonts bigger icons so it can come across on YouTube properly so the first thing I want to talk about and this is going to be the first link for tonight in the show notes and it's from Livewire and this question came up in the last show on Saturday and it's what are good free backup software tools so I recommend it Isus I'm not I when I went to the site I don't know if it's still free but we have enough here that this can definitely work so Isus to do backup definitely uh they and here this link well, what they like, what they don't like. So here's something they don't like. Can't sign up for email notifications. Doesn't support event-based backups. And can't enable file exclusions. That's interesting. Probably the paid version, you'd be able to, you'd be able to do that. AOMI, A-O-M-E-I, Backupper Standard. That's another one. I'm not familiar with that, but I am. We're going to come up with one that I am. Mini Tool Shadow Maker was ranked three. Uh, backup Maker. I've absolutely have used Backup Maker, and that has worked fine. You need simple backup? Absolutely. Absolutely. You'd be able to do this and download it. You try some of these out. Look at the interface. See if you like it and, and give it a try. Make sure it's truly free. Komodo Backup. Listeners have written in, I know, over the years, recommending Komodo Backup. Another good one. This is the one I wanted to get to. I have made Drive Images with Drive Image XML. I highly recommend that. If you are doing a Drive Image, I've used that software. That has saved me many, many times before I started using a Cronus to make a drive image. They go on, Cobian re Reflector, um, let's keep going, uh, File Fort Backup, never heard of that, that's like ranked 8th. I would think right now the top, you know, maybe look at the top 10 and take a look at that. So... That is about the, the backup software. Would you, uh, good question by Marius here. Would I let a business customer use a free backup software? No. Unless it depends on the business and it depends that if they absolutely have no money. And I, I still would try to talk them out of it. I still use and recommend Shadow Protect for image backups. And I still use Magnus Box for all online backups. And I try to convince every single client that I take on that they need to get a backup. And it has to be at least online. And that's what I, I absolutely want them. So, all right. Let's take a look at the next topic, Vivaldi. So this browser was recommended by Tim in the chat a few weeks ago when I complained that the cast option disappeared from Chrome. How can that be? How can the cast option disappear? I've reinstalled Chrome. I am at the latest version. There is no cast whatsoever. No matter what I do, no matter what I click, cast is not available. Well, guess what? Vivaldi, it's right there. I download Vivaldi and it uses the Chrome add-in. So I was able to use my Chrome full screen slideshow. 
then picked the graphic and I was able to cast it very easily. You go up to the big V icon and click cast, you know, file cast. And then I pick the Chromecast, which is on my Samsung TV, which I will show everybody right now. If you, if you're taking a look at my screen, you see the Mike Tech Show behind me on the left-hand side on the TV. That Samsung TV has a Chrome add-on in the back for Chromecast, and then any Google Chrome browser should work. Why did Cast get removed and I can't find any help online whatsoever for this? I can find out everything else and it tells me where it might be hidden or it might be. No, it's not there. Is anyone else running into that? I'm just very curious. Vivaldi has been fast, efficient, very nice. I am giving this serious consideration as my main browser because as I go forward and those of you who've been listening for a long time know my main browser is Firefox and all it does is disappoint me as each version keeps, they keep upgrading and upgrading. The more and more it takes up all the resources, because I think there's a lot of memory leaks in the software. It just, you know, brings my system to a halt sometimes. Websites, I can't browse as well as I can in a Chrome-based. I'm just getting so disappointed. It's it's so horrible for uh, Firefox going forward. Let's keep going. And let me go full screen and then get rid of the menu and go to uh, first. Let's go to email. But you know what? As we go to email, this is from our moderator, Taz, Mike, Mike Cooley, who recommended the Windows Repair Toolbox. And if you take a look, you scroll down, you'll be able to just download it. Now, I've already downloaded it, and I'm going to demonstrate it. But first, we got to unzip it. So I'm going to unzip it to here. And now it's unzipped. And what I'm going to do is then just run and... Click yes, accept, and then it takes us back to that website, but it takes a few seconds to start, and it's performing a loading sequence and initializing, so it's pulling all of the system information. It updated definitions, and this is like the ultimate collection of utilities and things you can do. One of the things that I like is the very bottom it gives you the temp the cpu windows 10 pro it's 32 gigs of ram the disk how much space is left i like this bitlocker off or on bitlocker is off now for the tools we got hardware tools here we go hardware info let's let's click on that uh download unavailable Ooh, how about cpu z's there we go so hardware info wouldn't download, but CPU ID, and there we go. That's a common utility we've talked about, but it's all right here. You have disk info, a stress test. We're not going to do that. Battery info, if it's a laptop. Uh, what is Fumark? It's a lightweight but very intensive graphics card stress test. Okay. <laughs> now we got useful tools. Process Mon, love that. Uh, grant permissions, check permissions, and unlocks multiple files and folders. NUR Launcher, we've talked about that. That's a whole utility that summarizes all the different programs all into itself. Uh, there's a blue screen reader, App Crash, Ninite. There you go. Uh, repairs, Windows Repair All in One, great program. Process Explorer, Auto Runs. Love Process Explorer. Let's run that. And we'll agree, and that's part of the sys internals utilities. And this is 
you know, analyzing all the processes that's running on my system. You see how fast that is. And let me tell you, this is not a fast system. This is an older Core i5 computer. And I'm running it remotely. Okay. And now, yes, I have gig up and down here in Florida and gig up and down in Pennsylvania. And I'm using Synchro to the splash top to remote in and take care of everything. Let's keep going. Malware removal. You can tag and check all these things and run them unattended. Or you can just run them one at a time. You have Adware Cleaner. Now, here you go. Norton Power Eraser. I don't think I've ever used that. I don't think I've ever used Dr. Web Cure It. Detects and removes malware inf infections. So, I think that's new since the last time I've looked at this. This is telling you the monitoring of the CPU temp, the percent time, percent use, percent busy for the disk, RAM, CPU, everything you want. Then you got custom tools. You can add your own tools. You can run tests and get reports. You can add notes to the report. This is a pretty complete toolbox for your use. And I highly recommend using that. I, I tell you, I haven't, I haven't used it as much as I should. I know that because I've talked about the utility, but I find myself still using, and uh, now the Windows Repair Toolbox is free. I still use Ultra Virus Killer, which is pretty intense with its options. Uh, you still only pay one price to be able to use it. And I download that, and I love when I run that on a client's machine that it gives me the option of uninstalling when I'm finished and I'm exiting the program so it'll remove it because we don't want to leave utilities dangling around for the client to explore and play with, and then they cause self-inflicted injuries that we got to then go in and repair. So we don't want that. So now I know I had two emails, I think, and uh, the one from Taz. And this is interesting. This was how to install and set up Windows 11 without an internet connection. And the I'm going to try to find a link for this where he, Bill goes step by step, and Bill, I really appreciate the, the email. Um, now, remember, if you are connected to the internet and you want to create a local account, I don't care if this is Windows Home or Windows Pro, you sign in with a at the at a.com. It's going to ask you for a password, put anything you want, just type anything. It's going to say, oops, you can't, you know, that's not available because that account's locked at Microsoft. And what you'll do is it'll now give you an option to create a local account. And I've talked about that. And we use that all the time when we want a local account on Windows 11. So now what I want to do is come up with a link. And uh, Bill, if you're hearing this, send me the link to those instructions so I can put it out there for everybody, which is... How do you set a system up that's not connected to the internet? And the question is, is it just temporary that the internet's down? Because I can't even conceive having a computer today where you don't have access to the internet. I mean, that's where you get everything for. So that's something I've never even considered, which is if their internet's down, well, I'm not going to hook up the new computers yet. I'm going to wait until we get the internet up and then I'll be able to install it. So would love to know, I guess, unless it's a single-use system for some reason where it's going to go into a different location that's not going to be connected to the Internet because maybe it's connected to a local machine doing something. If that's the case, I think I would still connect it to the Internet so I can get all the updates, all the drivers, and then take it off. So there I would use my A at A.com. So just going over different options. And I guess that's why I've never ran into needing to set up a computer where the internet's not available because either it's going to become available or I would initially set it up on the internet 
and then take it off, move it to whatever we have to. Maybe it's doing dedicated printing where it's printing checks or something. And I have clients that have that and they have like a printer dedicated with micro ink, you know, to be able to print those checks. So that is it for tonight's show. I did it in the time that I wanted to, to do this. And remember, email me any questions you need help with anything business or consulting opportunities mike tech show at gmail.com sign up or, or not sign up well sign up for discord that's the forum that we use for the mike tech show and the link in the show notes that i have there every week you can click on that and sign up for free and then introduce yourself and there's an instruction to just go in and then we want to know that you're a real person and not a robot next subscribe to my youtube videos and that's at youtube.com slash michael smith mts that is it for tonight's show and hopefully i'll see everybody next week same time same channel bye bye